You know, I love me some country music. And high up on my list of favorites, Thomas Rhett, baby. You know, I've listened to that Die a Happy Man song probably about a gazillion times. Okay, Thomas was born with a passion for music at his very core. He and his dad, country singer Rhett Aikens, have worked on music together since Thomas was just a little boy. His love of music has carried him all the way to where he is right now. Thomas, his wife Lauren, and I have been friendly for years, but recently we've connected on more than just music. We're also parents by way of adoption. Thomas and Lauren brought their beautiful daughter, Willa Gray, home nearly seven years ago. And they've gone on to welcome three more daughters to their family, Ada James, Len and Love, and Lily Carolina. Between recording, touring, and parenting, it's kind of tough for Thomas to make space for much else. But I did catch up with him for a rare moment of quiet from his home in Nashville, just as he's getting ready to release his sixth studio album, Where We Started. And among the many topics we touched on, where he started. Stories that make me appreciate Thomas and his music even more. All right. Well, first of all, uh, Thomas, it's great to see you. As always, how are you? Good to see you, too. I'm doing well. I'm doing well. So, Thomas, I, I feel like you're, you're really going 100 miles an hour. And I admire it because we often say, this is my moment. I got to catch it. It's like lightning in a bottle. I don't want to miss it. But if you were to have a day that was just for you, again, Lauren and the kids aside, you have an open book, a, a blank slate for one day. Yeah. How does that day play out for you? Um, <clears throat> I think I would first of all have to get on a plane. Uh, I have a hard time finding peace in Nashville, but I've, I've found a lot of peace and solitude out west, whether it's in Montana or Utah or Colorado. And I think a perfect day for me would be to take my fly fishing rod out mm. to the Boulder River in Montana and just wait it the entire day. Just like start oh. at the bottom, go to the top. Uh, don't even care if I catch a fish or not. Just the the simple act of throwing a rod in and out of the river. I think like that that is the epitome of my uh, perfect alone day, which I have not had an alone day, I think, in almost five years. So yeah, at least I, I need I to schedule say. that. So what is it that you get out of being by yourself and throwing that rod? Like what feelings yeah. do you get from that? Uh, there's no one to compare myself to except for myself. Um, mm -hmm. Like I think as awesome as social media can be, uh, I think I think it ruins a lot of people. Uh, and yeah. I'm I'm in that box. And I think, I mean, shoot, I guess I've had social media for almost 10 years now. And I feel like every time I log on to my Instagram account, I get this like really quick little rush of like, oh my goodness, what did someone say about my song or what did they say about this? But then I see one negative thing and like my day is just like ruined. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And so when it, when I do like get to put my phone down for five or six hours, I find my anxiety level just going Dropping. down and down and down and down. Now, I do have four kids, so the anxiety does stay at a, at a little <laughs> right here. Um, yeah. But I just feel like the more that I can detach from the overload of information, you know what I mean? Like, I, I just don't feel like we as humans were built to absorb, and, and you absorb more knowledge than anybody that I know every day. And, like, I just don't know that we were meant to know as much as we know. I think when I when I am away from anything social or news-wise, yeah. yeah. like, yeah. I am a better dad, I am a better husband, I'm a better friend because there is space to yes. give that part of myself. When were you your happiest? I think I was... In a strange way, happier at my core when I felt like I wasn't under a microscope, if uh -huh. that makes any sense. Yeah. Um, I know you. I know you can relate to that. Mm -hmm. But like, would I change anything that I have for the world? No. Um, mm -mm. But there are days where you you do kind of wish you could just be just you at the core, no matter what, no matter what restaurant you're in, no matter if you're at Disney World. You know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. it's uh, it's that that has changed a lot. I mean, I I have learned how to find joy uh, a ton, mm -hmm. like through through quote unquote being famous or being under the spotlight. But mm -hmm. there just seemed to be something so simple. I don't know yeah. about being in high school or yeah. being in, being in college. Yes. Um, um, and so you know, I think that's that's something that Lauren and I both try to create in our lives is simplicity mm -hmm. and and normalcy. You know, a lot of people always ask how are we raising our kids and. We're trying to raise them as normal as humanly possible, which is really challenging because our lives are anything but normal. 
you know. Mm -hmm. But I think striving for simplicity has brought Lauren and I and our kids the most joy that that we Mm. could imagine. From the moment I met you, whenever that was, a long, long time ago when you were just getting started, to right now, you are, I mean, you seem exactly the same to me. I can still (laughs) drunk FaceTime you and you'll pick up, which is my definitely my litmus test. It's my favorite part of my week, I'll be honest with you. (laughs) I don't do it every week, but I do it often enough. No, I... I I don't want people to think I'm a stalker. (laughs) No, No, me and Lauren love it so much. Um, And I would say the same about you. I mean, Mm. not that this is like a Mm -hmm. compliment back and forth type thing, but it is very, very true. Like, you you are one of the most down-to-earth people that I've ever met, especially... Mm. With the, you're in front of the world every single day, um, yeah. and so when I when I describe my my being under a microscope, you are a million times more <laughs> than that. But I remember when Lauren and I first got married. Um, we, we I mean I, I think I maybe had five hundred bucks to my name, and my dad had just bought a condo, and I told him like we can't pay rent, and so he just made us pay the HOA fee, which was like forty five dollars a month, and even that hurt. It was our first Christmas as a married couple. I just signed a record deal. And uh, we lived across the street from a um, a Harris Teeter, which I don't know if y'all have those up there, but it was like a grocery okay. store. And like I'm talking about five nights a week, we would buy a frozen pizza and the cheapest bottle of wine we could find, mm-hmm. and like, and we'd go to the Christmas tree lot. And I remember Lauren, I was like, why don't we just go to freaking Target and buy, you know, a nine dollar fake Christmas tree? And she's mm-hmm. like, well, because I've always had a real one, and uh-huh. Christmas trees are like seventy bucks. <laughs> You know what I mean? A tree is $70. And I remember calling my business manager at the time and being like, hey, can I afford this? And we went back and put that Christmas tree up and made a frozen pizza and had a bottle of wine. And you want to talk about content yet proud that that we had accomplished that. Well, you and Lauren uh, met when you were little and then ended up getting married after you guys have lived a little. But you were you all were both young and people were telling you, what are you doing? You looked like 22 or something. Yeah, we were 22 when we got married for sure. Yeah. Did everyone who tried to talk you out of it? Um, I don't think it was like a, a talking out of. It was more yeah. of just like, make sure, make sure. You know what I mean? Which is yeah. which is normal. You know, I think for a parent to say to a kid, like I might say the same thing. You know, when, yeah. if if my daughters were like, "Hey, I'm 17 and I found the guy I want to marry," yeah. I'm like, "Are you sure?" Yeah. You know, positive. <laughs> but I can also be like, you know what? If that's your heart and that's what you believe, like, here to support you. You know. So you um, were sure, and she was sure. We were sure, but we also knew each other for since like third grade you yeah. know what i mean like she knew me as a sixth grader as a 10th grader um as an idiot in college i mean she 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 was with me through every every up and down phase of life and so when we got married we were already best friends anyway and they you know my parents had always said make sure you marry your best friend you know and mm-hmm. i was like well i mean this is uh this is my best friend and she is very attractive and i'm <laughs> i'm i'm here for it and uh but, you know, I think, like, at that time, it, it wasn't super cool to be married and be a uh, a country singer. You know what I mean? And I yeah, just thought that was the stupidest thing in the world. Yeah, yeah. Um, And it was kind of weird. Like, at the time, I guess this would have been 2012. I mean, there were love songs, but, like, there, there weren't, there weren't like, a lot of love songs about, like, from a from a country singer being like, y'all know who this is, and this is what I'm singing about. This is my wife. Yeah, this is you for know? her, right. Um, from the get-go of my career, Lauren was just such a part of, I mean, we were a package deal. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, she came to, she was at every show. The fans knew her. Mm-hmm. Everybody knew her. And so, when Die Happy Man came out, like, yeah, I think the song, I think Die Happy Man is good. But I think that it was great at the time because it hadn't been done in a while in that way. And it was almost like the stars kind of lined up for that song. With all I got is your hand in my hand. Baby, I could die. A happy man. Your parents are divorced. Yeah. Were you scared getting married? Did you think our our patterns do they repeat? Like were you worried? Um Yeah, I mean there was a part of me that was just like, is is that gonna be me too? You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like yeah. I remember, you know, Lauren's dad, he flies like uh jets for a living, like he owns oh. like a charter company in Nashville and you know, in the nineties he would fly you know, you know, you name that country artist. Mm-hmm. He flew him around, and so he'd been around the business for a while. And I remember before me and Lauren got married, he was like, "You better keep your head on straight." You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. He was like, "You bet, you better not do anything out there on the road <laughs> because I, I promise you, I've seen it, and I will call you out immediately." <laughs> and I was like, "You don't have anything to worry about," you know? Yeah. And um, yeah. But as I got into it, I I, I quickly realized how easy that yeah. could be. Yeah. Um, without the right boundaries. Mm-hmm. put in place did your parents give you 
um, advice, like uh, marriage <clears throat> advice? Uh, yeah, for sure. But, you know, like, you know, I think like my dad and my mom were, were different. They, they kind of came from that generation of like, you know, they got pregnant before they were married uh-huh. um, in South Georgia. Mm-hmm. And it was like one of those times in life where it was like, well, we should probably get married. You yeah. know what I mean? But I think kind of early on, you know, my, I think my dad really wanted, I think he had more life that he wanted to live. And, mm-hmm. and you know, I think him looking back, like those are things that he may not be um, proud of. But like, mm-hmm. that's, that's just life. You know, we that's live life. and we, we live and we learn. And, you know, um, I feel like I got really blessed with um, with an amazing family that has that has baggage just like we all do. When do you think your dad was proudest of you? Um, I think he may just be proud of how I have approached this career. I think he writes with people all the time that go, man, how'd your son turn out so good? You know what I mean? And it's, it's kind of a joke, but I, but I think he, you know, he kind of gets like, you know, my, my dad was, was pretty wild, you know, back in the day. And, uh-huh. and I, I've definitely had my fair share of wild moments, but I knew that when I, when I got married, like this was, this was the goal. If everything else fell apart, yeah. this, this had to stay together. Um, and, yeah. and that, that is, that is what I vowed the day I got married. And that is what I, that is what I plan on you know, committing to until the, the day that I die. Well, I know having kids was something that was um, high on your priority list. The way you went about it was obviously very interesting. Yeah. Uh, Lauren was on a mission trip to Uganda yeah. and fell in love, basically. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's just, that's just how it happened. So she met Willa. What was it about her, about that specific child of all the children yeah. uh, who Lauren met and, and you got to know? What was it about her? Yeah, you know... That was such a, a crazy time because my wife up to that point had um had traveled with me and me solely. You know what I mean? Like she kinda she kinda gave up a lot to to be along my side, mm-hmm. you know, during this journey. I mean, she went to the University of Tennessee, uh, graduated with a nursing degree, uh nursing school about killed her. Um as I'm sure many, many nurses out there, it's freaking hard. Um but she finished that and We went into marriage counseling, and our marriage counselor said, I think y'all need to be fully together your first year on the road because the year that she graduated, I went on this thing called radio tour, which is where you're gone for like eight months, and Mm. you're literally visiting every country radio station in the country. So if she had gone and worked in the hospital and I had gone to do that, our first year of marriage would have been completely just Mm -hmm. split apart. And so she decided to come with me that whole first year, and that led into the next you know, five years of our marriage. Um, mm-hmm. I don't think my wife ever planned on marrying someone that was doing what I'm doing. Like, I think that if she could have picked at that age, she probably would have picked someone that was going to be home at five o'clock. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. And she probably would have lived a whole lot simpler of a life had she done mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. Um, but there was just no denying, uh, you know, our love for each other. And to this day, I mean, I, I just, I literally just look at her and say, thank you. Thank you for marrying me because I, I would be a total disaster. I, I wrote a song last year called I'd Be a Nightmare Single, um, and it is very true. Um, anyway, to, back to your question. That was when she had met a few people that were already doing work in Uganda, and I think my wife at that point had felt a little bit um, passionless, if mm-hmm. you will. I, like, I think she felt like her passions had to be my passions. Mm-hmm. Um and so we had a, that was like a year of like long conversation of like, well, what, you know, what, what is your passion? And she was like, well, I still want to help people medically. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like I want to, mm-hmm. I want to use the skill that I trained so hard for. And I was like, well, that is a hundred percent understandable. Mm-hmm. Like, let's figure that out. You know, and kind of a, a God thing that she met, uh, this woman named Suzanne who, uh, was already doing ministry and, and, um, mission work in, in Uganda and Lauren went with her and I was still back in America, you know, doing shows and. I remember she sent me a, a picture of this little girl, and uh, in Uganda they had they had named her Blessing. That was the that was the name that they gave her. She didn't have any parents, and uh, and no no siblings um, that that we knew of. And she sent me a picture of her holding Blessing, and she said, "We have got to help, you know, find her family or find find mm-hmm. her a home." And uh, you know, they did a ton of research on, you know where where she was found all this kind of stuff and and it was just it was heartbreaking you know like i i can't imagine i don't know one, like one of my children just not not having a family to call mm-hmm. to call home you know and and so i just it just can't i don't even remember saying it but it came out of my mouth i was like we'll we'll we will we'll bring her home you know and mm-hmm. my wife was like are you serious and yeah. next thing you know you know we're what why were you so sure what was it about that image I've just never seen my wife glow the way that she was glowing. 
Like, yeah, I, I can't, I yeah. can't describe it, but it already felt like it was a thing. I, I don't remember saying it. It just, it just erupted out of my stomach. It just like happened. And, uh, <laughs> And then I, you know, we hung up the phone and I was like, what did I just say? Like, and, um, because I don't know that I was ready to be a dad yet. I don't think anyone's ready to be a parent until you are, you know until what I'm saying? You are. Um, that kind of makes me, um, like, I, I feel like whenever the truth is told, like I get this weird wave of emotion, yeah. like I get chills and I feel it. And you, that statement you just made there was like a, was like a, a tidal wave for me. <laughs> It yeah. was a God moment, you said. Yeah, For that's sure. really, really big. So you got Willa Gray, and and then Lauren gets pregnant. Then y'all are off and running. You got four girls now. Yeah. Do you want a boy? I think I've passed that point. To be <laughs> honest with you, I think uh, that's like the most question I get asked is like, when are you yeah. trying again? I mean, Lauren's whole dream she wanted to have five kids. Like that's five, since yeah. the day we got married, she's like, I want to have five, and I'm sitting there going, <laughs> that's fine, you know. Yeah. Five would be great. But we sit there and we go, you know, they're all in such different phases of life. Mm. <laughs> We're having a hard time figuring out how do we make one-on-one time right. for, like, all of our kids, for you know. So, got now. So I told Lauren, I was like, I mean, let's have five, but let's, let's take a let's take a four-year deep breath. <laughs> so, <laughs> Yeah, exactly. She'll get her five eventually, but for you're sure. right. Sometimes you need a minute. As you know, I adopted two children. And yeah. a lot of questions come up, at which I'm already getting from Haley, and I'm, I will get from Hope, too. What questions is Willa Gray asking or are your other daughters asking? And how have you guys navigated that? Because I've got two kids from different countries and, you know, it's, For sure. it, there are questions that pop. Yeah, it's hard, you know, because I, yeah. I think I think when you become a parent, you, you're you like, well, I'm a dad, I have all the answers, you know, yeah. or I'm a mom, I have yeah. all the answers. Um, and, like, adoption is, is one of the most beautiful things in the world. And I, and I don't think at the beginning of it you – I don't think you go – Oh, in like six years, I'm gonna have to start answering yeah. some like really, yes, really intense questions, you know. And and I think I don't know if you felt this at all, but it's kind of like you go, well, what age? Mm -hmm. Like, what age is the right age? You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Because the world is moving so fast that it's like, mm -hmm. you know, to have a conversation with a six year old about that. Maybe I'm too old school to think that way, but I go, maybe we need to wait till she's ten. And I, I love the innocence that they have because they don't have any, they haven't been tainted yet yes. by the world. They haven't been jaded by the world like they, they don't they don't see things like adults mm -hmm. see things and so in, in your parent brain you're like well how do i keep this innocence alive mm -hmm. as long as i possibly as can as long as possible yeah you know because i mean i feel like i read the bible and god's like well you if, if you're not if you don't have the heart of a child you're not you ain't doing it right <laughs> and i'm like well how could i have the heart of a child when we're at war and we're at we're, this is right. happening and that's happening right, and like right. and they don't they don't know any of that stuff yet you know yeah and so we really just try to we try to be as honest as we can without the confusion. And how has uh, Thomas having four daughters impacted you as a husband to Lauren? I just had to sit back and like reprioritize my life. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like yep. if music was number 1 for the last 8 years, music is now like number 3. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Like I love it and I want to be great at it, but like if me being great at music makes my parenting and my husband role suffer. Yeah. What's it worth when I'm 50? What's it worth? Yeah. You know what I mean? You're right. You're right. I remember interviewing you when you hadn't won an award and it was all brand new and now you're just such a staple and such a name. What What is it like now when you stand up on a stage and the stadium is full? Is it like <clears throat> what it was before? What does it feel like for you? I still pinch myself. Yeah. Um, and I'm also... I'm also a perfectionist, I think in some good ways, but mostly a fault, um, mm -hmm. which maybe maybe leads back to my comparison issue uh -huh. because I, I walk out there and I go, gosh, this place holds 15,000 people, but there's there's 14,900 here. <laughs> like, I'm like, where's the other hundred at? You know what I mean? Like, but, but then I walk out there and I go, golly, it feels like yesterday that I was 21 years old, yeah. you know, opening for – who, whoever it was. Were you competitive about everything? Like, did you play sports when you were a kid? Yeah. Yeah. So you very, always wanted to win. Very yeah. competitive. Yeah. With everything? That's just your, in your DNA? Yeah. Like, I have this weird fear of just, like, not not being the best. I, huh. And I don't know where that comes from, but it, but it happens in every area of my life. Like, I can go back and remember playing – I was playing Monopoly with Lauren when we were 16 years old. <laughs> 
and she's really good at math. And I'm real like I just learned how to tip three years ago. Um, <laughs> and she beat me, and I was like, I don't want to play Monopoly, Monopoly with you anymore. <laughs> You're so crazy. And even with my hobbies, like when I when I get into a hobby, yeah, I go hard. Like what? Well, what? Give me a hobby. Fly fishing, hunting, oh, yeah. skiing. Yeah. Like I gotta have the best equipment. I gotta watch a million YouTubes. I gotta hire a, a trainer. We need to get into this. What is this? No, this is deep in your psyche since you know, you're a kid. Yeah, and like I think I'm about to go on a kind of a weird tangent, mm-hmm. but I'm getting to a point. I I think the reason I hate hate so bad and like mm-hmm. Instagram hatred or mm-hmm. just even posting a song and someone being like, "This sucks." Yeah, like that should be able to roll off my back. Yeah. But it doesn't. Like, it sticks with me for weeks. Yeah. And I go back into my sixth grade self, and, like, I was kind of a, I won't say an outcast, but I was, uh, I just wanted to be different than everybody else. You know what I mean? Like, if it was cool to play football, I wanted to start a lacrosse team. Uh If it was cool to to listen to the Backstreet Boys, I wanted to listen to the Ramones. Uh And I was in sixth grade, and me and some buddies started a punk rock band, and on the night of prom... We scheduled our first concert because we were like anti prom. You know what I mean? Probably because we didn't get asked or no one wanted to go with us. That was probably the real reason. But I remember we put these flyers up in the hallway, like come to see the high hill flip flops at whoever's house. Yeah. And there was somebody on the football team that went through the hallway and ripped all of our flyers down uh-huh. and just started shredding them in half. Uh huh. And that was the first moment that I said, I will be better than that. I will always be a bigger person than that. I'm about to cry even talking about it, yeah. but I, I don't know if that was where my uh, desire to prove people wrong so much came into play, but I, I can I can go back in my brain and see that so vividly. And so anytime anyone does something unique or weird or different in country music, in pop music, in sports, in whatever, when someone wants to tear somebody down for something, I'm like, you need to sit down. Sit down because yes. you don't know i know we we've been talking about life and it makes me so happy but let me just get to your music because <laughs> yeah. i feel like it's evolving too you were writing songs before you were singing them uh publicly yeah and you still had like i was surprised at such a young age you had so much stuff to say like i didn't even know you lived enough life to say those things <laughs> and now they're getting deeper even yet but i feel like you must have lived a lot of life uh even when when you, when you were young yeah, I feel like I did. You know, like I, I mean, I think you know our life, every every bit of trauma in our lives shapes us in a way. You know, whether and you get to choose for the worse or the better. You know, mm-hmm. um, you know, d- divorce is not a fun thing to go through. You know, as a kid, and for a long time, I didn't think it affected me until I started to become an adult and I started to pull out little bits of pieces of how mm-hmm. that did affect me. And you know, uh, knowing Lauren and knowing certain people in our lives that had passed away way too early, like you kind of go, well, that's just life. But then you go, no, like. That sucks, that and sucks. that that affected yeah. you, you know. And yeah. I think I've always just been a really old soul. Um, mm-hmm. Like I think I've always been an overthinker and thought about my future probably way more than your average eighteen or nineteen year old kid, mm-hmm. you know. Um, mm-hmm. And so at a young age, like I really was trying to be older than my my driver's license said. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. Which is a good song title. We'll write that together. Yeah, um, that's a good one. <laughs> I've always just wanted to make sure that whatever I said, I mean, I've definitely released songs that were just for fun and just for yeah, you to dance to. But for the most part, if you hand me a guitar, I, I do want to write something uh, meaningful, you know, and, and something that someone across the world can hear by accident and be like, man, I, I've felt that. I felt I've, that. I've been I there. Uh-huh. I've had that heartbreak. I've had that joy, you know. Um uh-huh. And so a lot of people ask, like, why I get so personal in my songs, and it's, like, really the only way I know how to do it. You know, like, yeah, I, I've right. tried to write, a quote-unquote, just, like, a hit, you know, mm-hmm. like, oh, this mm-hmm. would sound good on the radio. And I've definitely had a few of those, but for the most mm-hmm. part, if I can write my honest truth and it be a hit, that is, mm-hmm. uh, that's the mecca there, right there. So. Well, uh, Thomas, I just want to say it's always such a treat to visit and talk with you. Likewise. I love your music. We're going to be just... It, it's my happy place, man. I hit <laughs> Thomas Rhett Radio, Thomas, Thomas Rhett on Spotify, and um, I just can't wait to, to see you soon. Well, likewise, Hoda. I hope you have a great day. Thank you so All much right, for talking too. with me. Thanks again. 
Hey, thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Find your favorite recipes, celebrity interviews, uplifting stories, shop our favorite deals, and so much more with the Today app. Download it now.